Wow, I got a nice little crowd here. See a lot of familiar faces of people, people's hands I shook, and I'm very happy to see that. Five tips to connect authentically with your customers. Um, I've been very big on um, personal branding and marketing and getting across that message and especially having um, met so many people in this space. It's personal. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, humanizing your brand, five tips to connect. Let me go skip test this slide any minute now. Here we are. Dominic Miserandino, I'm CEO of RetailWire.com. RetailWire.com is an online publication covering the retail industry. Uh, I actually have to update the slides, about 600,000 people a month at this point. I've been in the media space for about 30 years now, um, and I've certainly been consulting um, brands on how to rebrand and how to refocus their brand. And today I'm gonna to go through some stories that affected me and taught me about how to do this. Personal relationships equal loyal advocates. And what you see here is a picture of Abraham and Strauss, a department store in Brooklyn, New York. My grandfather was a furniture salesman there and turned out one of the top furniture salesmen. And the story I was always told is if you came in and there was a special or sale going on across the street, he would literally tell you, do not shop from us today, consider across the street. And I love that. And of course, you can imagine everyone who in the organization was concerned, uh, and rightfully so. Um, but what happened were the customers would ask for him, and only him. They trusted him. They would get uh, across the street for a, a wine glass or something small but save that trust to buy from him the furniture in the store. And inevitably, it turns out he was the number one salesperson in the whole Macy's, Abraham and Strauss was acquired by Macy's, in the entire Macy's empire. Um, the executives were so confused when he got sick, they just wanted him back at work, and they're like, how is this happening? And by being authentic, by being honest, you tur he turned the customers into their own advocates. This is the Brain Trust, uh, one of our video calls we did, and the Brain Trust are the advisors for Retail Wire. And when I came on board, there was 120 uh, personalities, let's say, my, very mildly. They're all influencers, and if you've dealt with influencers, uh, yeah, your eyes should bug out. They're pretty scary people. <laughs> so immediately I scheduled calls with all 120. Yes, literally 120 phone calls, scheduled them all first three weeks. I was averaging 10 to 12 phone calls a day. And what was funny to me was I started realizing that, of course, people talk amongst themselves and I started hearing references. Well, you know, I guess I could trust him. You could work with him because um, I got it on the group thread. I'm like, this group thread talking about me? Now I'm feeling insecure. But they kind of rushed to be that advocate. Most of the sales when I took over Retail Wire were coming from referral. I didn't have to advertise anywhere. I didn't have to put a placard. I just called the 120 and then naturally they called the others. And I love that feeling that now that cycle continues of personal advocacy. Um, in fact, these are the students at Hofstra University. I lecture at a few places every so blue moon. And it goes along that personal advocacy thing. These students have said, what do you need? How can I help you? How can I be involved in your uh, company? And when you create that personal, you might have a going beyond brand. You have people say, can I work with you? And I love that. I had a student very recently say, can I work with you? And I thought, wow, I talked to this student 12 years ago, you know, isn't that a great feeling? I didn't have to put out an ad. There he was. Tip number one, leave a lasting impression. And I, you know, in this photo, I purposely took of a mixer I was at, and you don't even see me in this mixer. You might think, oh, that's you know, not the best photo. You should be in the mixer in the photo. I'm in the back left, and I'm at this party, and um, somebody walks up to me and says, I'm spending $50,000 more a month with you. 
and I just want you to know it's going well. And I thought, who, the, who are you? <laughs> um, he goes on to say it's going so well. He loves the team. And I said, I love the team too. Do you want to tell me who on the team? If you want name names, I'd love some means of identifying them. It took me about three to five minutes to figure out that I was listed on the board of directors for a friend's company. And I kind of thought of it in passing. But I worked with this guy and he trusted me from a previous conversation. And then in turn, he wanted to, not only wanted to do business with me, he was actively spending 50K a month with my company. Now that got awkward because I'd have to call my buddy and say, you know, what's going on? You want to share some information with me? And maybe send me a $10 Amazon card? And what do we want to do here? So I think it was such a reminder that that lasting impression. This I love, and I tell people this story. Um, there was a shampoo company retail, and the shampoo company, um, their uh, focus was the shampoo actually had artwork on it, like famous art pieces, and that was kind of the uh, focal point. He called me up, asked for advice, and I really talked for an hour. And thank God, I just want to give him anything I can. I was like, what can I do for you to help direct this? Four years later, he calls me. Can you be on my board of directors? Again, I had no recollection. It's kind of, I remember Tuesday, so I was like, that's great. And I was so happy to give to the customer, which goes right back when you're saying building that authenticity, that's the theme, and to get it together, all these were moments that didn't cost me anything. I just was giving and trying to be a good human and as much as I can. I was um, chief marketing officer for Adorama Picks at one point, and following this theme, I called every single of the top customers. Uh, literally said, give me a, sp a spreadsheet of the 20,000 customers, but give me the top 100 spenders. And I would say, what do you need? What do you feel? I actually start most of my staff meetings with, what do you feel? What's going on? Like, just talk to me. And I remember three or four of them were like, they really just were curious how the product was made. And I thought, okay, I started taking notes. And then inevitably, I said, well, you're going to come in for a factory tour. We have a factory tour next week. What a coincidence. And I called my staff and I said, we're having a factory tour. We're just going to figure it out together. I have no idea how, but we'll put this all together. And it was that communication of surpassing the digital. And I think we all get lost in the digital. I sent an email. And I literally like call, call, call. And that builds your authenticity to everyone in the crowd. That's our jobs. We're trying to connect with the customer and have that personalized experience. And in doing so, not only are they becoming advocates in this personal experience, they were now customers in, uh, embedded <laughs> in the situation. I loved this particular moment. You see here, Moisha. More, uh, sorry, that's Morris in this shot. Um, as I mentioned, I was CMO of Adorama Picks, and um, Morris was my right hand. Uh, first thing I did is I studied every week, week into the driving into Brooklyn. And I would notice they would speak very freely in Yiddish about me. Um, and you could tell it was about me because it was like, at the time, like blah, 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 Dominic. I'm like, okay, I think you're talking about me. I hear my name, it's probably the implication. And then one meeting I said, you come right down the bus of the Yiddish, really? It's pretty good me. I'm sorry, what? I'm like, I, I, I understand enough to say you're talking about me now. <laughs> And I learned the, a little bit, and you know, it's far from something I could, but enough to understand. I want to understand you. I don't connect. I want to connect with you in some way. We're having a conversation, and I'm trying to move the sales. And I asked him, I said, listen, um, I know my wife, as a wonderful Catholic woman, loves to have photo albums from birth forward. Is there any Jewish holiday like this? And he mentioned the bris. And I said, no, I don't think you want a photo album of a bris. I just don't think that when you're cutting, eh, you don't want to do that. And then he mentions upshare, which is the holiday where essentially you're shaving the hair 
and you're keeping the curls in orthodoxism. And I was like, that's interesting. I've never heard of this before, probably never will. And I go into Google and I'm like looking, who's bidding on Upshare right now? And at the time, zero. Nobody was bidding on it. And then I say, can we make a landing page? And I want to know what kind of landing page do you want that will match your, um, your culture and your feelings? And I don't know. I don't know your culture. I, I'd love to know. And I said, so we actually got a special model for the page. We made the wording right. We did this all, and the sales went up through the roof. It was great. It was literally one of those overnight sales moments, all because we became friends. We still talk very often, and I love that. We went out for dinner, we discussed it, and you know, especially when you see, and this is why I so preach the humanity in people, you come to conferences and we're discussing like the latest tech or the latest vendor to increase sales, but sometimes just having a conversation, <laughs> learning someone else's culture, their holidays, their feelings. Never stop networking. Now, I love this too. At one point, I had a, a desire to move to Quebec City, Canada. I have a house up there. Je peux parler français un peu. My accent is très terrible. Um, but I wanted to give my kid this multicultural experience. I could drive there from New York. I'm like, I'm going to do it. Um, I'm on that, literally, this street. Took, I went back to take a photo for this presentation, even. I still have the house up there. And I'm on the street, and someone stops me and recognizes my face. And the reason was, and it, I feel kind of devious, but it shows you that network, no, networking. I connected with every single CEO in Quebec City on LinkedIn. I connected all their email addresses. And I ran an ad campaign that was very expensive. It cost me $12.86. And I targeted their Facebook, their Instagram, their Twitter. And the guy's on that street and he's looking, going, what are you doing? <laughs> and he was so confused, of course, seeing my face 12 times a day. And the, the landing page was, I am Dominic. I'm thinking I'd like to just have a meeting. Oh, we talked. We became really good friends. I have a very big crew of friends up there. We decided not to move at the time because COVID was one of the many reasons at the time. But it really showed me the power of networking and making it personal and connecting. Throughout all this, I mean, I'm looking at so many faces I got to meet at this conference, pointing to the faces I got to meet, and it really showed me that. And this was a moment we're discussing a business deal, discussing uh, starting something on a street because he sees my phone, and I love the fact, $12.80. You guys don't have $12 in your budget. That's a concern. I've actually used this trick I had a few times over. I've done conferences, like I went to once in Vail, and I said, dear Facebook, target everyone in Vail. Uh, I'm go going to hit somebody at the conference. There's not many people in Vail. And it was such a wonderful feeling to personalize, connect that authenticity to the human. And that's kind of my whole goal here. My goal is everything I learned in the book from every business class I ever took was the numbers. You know, especially this conference, numbers, numbers, numbers. And the biggest things that moved the needle for me was the human. Understanding that person, taking those numbers and connecting those numbers to the human. And then there was a direct impact. Some of you would, might not be here in this room if it wasn't for me grabbing and saying, hey, good to meet you, good to talk with you, good to have a moment an authentic moment. It is not simply, in my opinion, mass emailing customers or uh, giving them that standard message. It's understanding the human within. Why are you doing this? What makes you unique? And what makes you special? So that's my biggest mo message here. Everyone, be human to help your business grow. Mm -hmm.